friends, welcome back to another episode of the Field and Garden Podcast. And folks, I just really appreciate you joining me here this morning. And I will tell you that, so this is, I'm recording this at the end of March. And this is a super exciting time of the year, right? I mean, many of us, depending on where you live in the world, are on the cusp of spring And some of us are maybe a little further out from spring, and some of us are deeply emerged already in spring blooms. And um, this morning, as I reviewed some of my uh, messaging from folks and looking on um, social media, I just thought, golly day, we are already um, beaten up on ourselves. And that led me to kind of think, you know, why are we disappointed? What is the problem here? And really it all, for me, because, you know, this is just my opinion, right? So it's all about failed expectations. What are expectations based on, friends? (laughs) You know, failed expectations and the root of them for me. And I will tell you that I'm still facing this today. And so I want you to know that what I'm going to kind of just gab about today is something that I find a rewind in my life over and over again as I face new areas, new, whether it's a new crop, a new part of your business, expanding your business, life. Um, So, you know, this is going to kind of be all over the place. So first off, I want to say that, you know, you're not a failure when you fail. (laughs) Our, whether the way we think about these things based on win or fail is based on our expectations. And so often what I find with me which I think is so true for so many, is that our expectations are based on dreams and hopes. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not implying that. But when your expectations are only based on that, the risk of failure just skyrockets. But when you add in a little bit more experience, and education, and gathering of knowledge, um, it kind of evens that keel right now, you know? So what I'm seeing is that lots of folks are beating up on themselves, um, mostly because what they expected has not come to pass. So I'm going to share one sad example that I am seeing so much of right now, an expectation that is letting people down left and right. And the unfortunate part of this letdown is that most often people have invested a lot of dollars. And I am just going to pause right here for a minute before I dive into it. Perhaps one of the most reassuring messages that I want to propel from my course, Flower Farming School Online, The Basics, is not so much an individual task or a way to do something, but it's the overriding message of while you are learning how to start a business, start a flower farming business, And to learn how to do all of that, to start with a low investment with the potential of the highest return so that what we're talking about today is not nearly as heartbreaking as it is for people that are, have not gone that trial. They, they've taken a different path. They have gone all in from the get go, meaning they've invested a lot of money in potentially because we're getting ready to talk about them, tulips, tulip bulbs. Maybe they paid cash up front for them, or maybe 
you know, a lot of people are doing this, paying for crop roots, bulbs um, on credit, thinking, oh my gosh, I'll make so much money in the spring and I'll pay that off. Y'all, first off, I never recommend that path. Secondly, very seldom does that work out the way that you think it is going to. And this experience is the basis of one of the strongest messages in my course is you do not have to be here right now. Balling, crying, nauseous, distressed, upset, having a panic attack about what in the heck am I going to do with all these tulips that are blooming six to eight weeks before I thought they were going to bloom. Friends, that's kind of how tulips are. They're very finicky that way. It doesn't have to be this way is all that I am kind of want to give you that glimmer of hope as I start talking about some of these failed expectations that when you get on the other side of the fence, once you've been growing, if you make it, by the way, through the first year or maybe the second year or the third year, because taking the low road of having so many failures means those people typically never get to the high road. I will say that I'm on the high road now. I was able to push through it. Um, and so many other people have, and I'm not saying it's the only way. I'm saying that fewer and fewer people make it to the other side. So let's talk about some of these failed expectations. So what am I seeing all across social media and hearing about is um, one super short tulips. They're blooming at six inches tall um, or worse yet, they are blooming, perhaps, you are actually harvesting them much later than you really should, and you don't really have a cooler, so you can't really sit on them. And then let's just add in the seal of the deal to death to the crop. You don't have anywhere to sell them. Those are all realistic failures that we're seeing over and over again. But every one of them has a very reasonable solution and answer that if that answer or solution had been at least considered before planting tulips, chances are you wouldn't even be on that upset or wherever you are. Do you know that there is certain steps to follow when you're growing tulips commercially? It's not like a a home landscape, y'all, or a home cutting garden where you plant bulbs and, oh gosh, if 50% of them don't come up or if none of them come up for a variety of reasons, or if they come up short, or if they come up and bloom and, oh my goodness, I had hoped they would be blooming at Easter, but now they're blooming at St. Patrick's Day or before. It's just, oh well, better luck next year. That is not the case when you have invested in a thousand or five hundred, or in one person's case, holy cow, ten thousand tulips, all of the wrong variety, y'all, all short because they were landscape variety tulips. I mean, I could sit on a soapbox and ball for people. I totally get it, but it was our expectation of just planting them and getting the end reward. There was no forethought. And again, I want to say there's nothing wrong with that. If you're a home gardener, explore all you want, experiment. But when you stick your toe into the business ring, that means everything you do snowballs towards the end result. So the short tulips, the nowhere to sell tulips, is a failed expectation. You expected to plant them and they were going to bloom and you were going to have people clamoring at your door to buy them. Doesn't work that way, friends. I am so sorry to say, and I totally get it. Um, So here is another one. Folks that have gone all in that really don't have any farming experience, which is kind of okay, but you have to have some growing gardening experience. You know, I look at somebody like, I remember when I hired Bobo. Bobo has worked with me, gosh, for like 12 or 13 years. 
Um, one of the reasons that I was so willing to to risk my neck and hire an outsider, meaning somebody outside of my family, was Bobo was an avid gardener. And she was also a flower arranger, which was kind of a bonus. But she had so much experience just she was active in her own garden. You know, she was planting zinnias every year and cutting them. She did church flowers as well as she was a freelance professional arranger, but she was doing it. Um, and she had some expectations of how that worked. She knew that failures happen. She knew that the weather is huge, key piece of this whole you know, equation. And when she came to work for me, she already had, you know, some pretty strong experiences to base her expectations. But of course, her expectations didn't really affect the way that my expectations for my business. I mean, if if she did something and it failed, it was like, oh, well, it was me that had to, um, it was the owner of the business that really had to pick up all the pieces and put it back together. But what I want to say is I see so many people entering into business, whether it be flower farming business or of design studio business, um, that really are doing it without absolutely any business experience. I want to say that for me, it is so true that when I launched my cut, my flower farming business, I really had barely any gardening experience. I had a little bit, but I had another piece of the pie that was just as important. And for me, I think it's even keel. I had business experience. I had been running a business. I was not the owner but I treated it like it was my business. I was the business manager of an animal hospital. I had managed people. I had managed all kinds of craziness through the two and a half decades that I worked there. So I already at least had a inkling of, okay, you know, to be in business, I need to spend less than I expect to make, or at least go in with that framework, right? I had some experience to base my hopes and dreams on. And what I am finding today through the messaging, through people reaching out, and through me seeing on social media is that people are just getting crushed based on them starting just on hopes and dreams. I am by no way squashing people's hopes and dreams, y'all. There is no quicker jumper than me, but you you have a much better opportunity to succeed if you mix those hopes and dreams in with a little bit of knowledge um, and an experience. So if you don't have experience, there is ways to get knowledge, right? So some of the things that I've learned is, first off, out of the gate, I want to say to you, we all are going to continue to do this because while I've, you know, I feel pretty safe and secure in my grower experience world, um, you know, I could, if I were to say tomorrow, let's just say that tomorrow I said, all right, I'm shutting down all this other parts of my business that I've created over the last two get decades. I'm going to just kind of go back to being a small grower. I'm going to get like maybe 30 or 40 or 50 bouquet subscriptions, which I feel like is just a super easy way, the easiest way um, to perhaps get in. Um, And I'm just going to produce for that. And I'm just going to, you know, produce for 15 weeks out of the year. And I could probably do that and feel totally confident but that's not how it works. We are all evolving. We are all wanting to grow. We're all wanting to dip our our toe into other things. So even though I am not exploring more bigger production of flower farming, 
I experience the very same things that you may be experiencing as a brand new grower, um, just in different areas. And I totally, totally get it. You know, and we do it in every walk of our life, whether it's business or parenting or whatever. So I want you to know that we're all continuing to evolve and face these failed expectations. And when we look at what the root of that expectation is, after we've made the failure, we can look back and say, you know what? If I would have just (laughs) thought about this or that, that could have turned out really different. And taking that lesson and applying it to our next expectation. And before we take the plunge on that expectation, apply a little bit more. And so what I want to say is, and I just want to tell y'all that I have married a man that is so good of reminding me of this. We just had a conversation at our breakfast table this morning um, about a project he and I are working on. And it's like I was having anxiety (laughs) over, oh my gosh, I do not want to have failed expectations on this. And he's like, all right, slow down. Let's take a look at how, what is the road that we need to take, better known as homework, um, for it to turn out better than what you're fearful of. And I'm just, this is kind of what led me to talk to y'all about this. All this anxiety, all of this fear is based on us not, us just jumping. So um, for flower farming and to apply that, um, I want to just talk about some things that I've already kind of hit on, but First and foremost, if you are a new flower farmer, I don't know if you have watched, I did a webinar a couple of years ago, and you can still request it. Um, It's called What It Takes to Be a Flower Farmer, and it just kind of gives the overview of what it takes or what it doesn't take, and I just think that that's a really great place to say, all right, at least I'm okay in those areas. Or maybe it'll help you to see like the bigger picture. And I will put the link um, for you to request that if you'd like it in the notes. It is so easy, y'all, for us to, especially right now, it's like, oh my gosh, everybody else is starting 80 bazillion seeds. They've got all these bulbs blooming. They've got this. They've got that. They've got this. And what do I have? Nothing. Friends, let me just tell you about having nothing. You may think you have nothing, but you have the opportunity of a lifetime to figure out what it is you want to grow. You know, one of the things that in that webinar, I don't know if I tap on this, so I'm just going to say it here. The secret to my farming success has been to back off of growing a whole bunch of different stuff and focusing on what sells, what I grow well, what I can grow in my conditions with the least amount of intervention that my customers that I've developed want week after week after week. Not peach and blush that are only sellable during the wedding season because that's not typically what retail customers want nor um, those folks that you're selling bouquets to perhaps. Friends, I'm telling you, there is a much bigger success equation than what most people go into this thinking. And it is a great opportunity when you do a little bit of homework. And, you know, I tapped on this before. It's like people jumping into this. Are you an experienced gardener that has been growing and harvesting oodles of flowers? That's kind of my Bobo example. Why Bobo wasn't a flower farmer, but she was an avid gardener that was an arranger that was always raiding her landscape and yard for cuts because she was always doing, she had an, always had a need for cut flowers. So she was already kind of seeing that system and having a little bit of experience and realizing the failures and the what her strong suits and what weren't. And these are things that are priceless experiences to bring into this. We have so many new gardeners that are seeing the opportunities 
to perhaps create a side business or to have a career in flower farming or growing cut flowers, right? That are jumping into this, but they really don't even have a lot of experience in flower growing or business. Because friends, I am here to tell you, that is a mouthful to bite off to learn how to commercially grow and to learn how to run a business. Those are two huge pieces to tackle at the same time. And it is the equation of failed expectations that a lot of people suffer through. By August and September, the pain and the reality is real. I'm not saying that there aren't people that will overcome that, but there are few. You can stack the cards in your favor. You know, I feel like a huge part of my success from this is while I knew, I mean, you can read Vegetables Love Flowers and Cool Flowers um, and read my stories wherever to learn that I was basically a total novice gardener when I took this plunge, but I was a very experienced business person. And another part of that was I come from a a lot of entrepreneurs in my family, which just means I had a lot of backup help and experience in entrepreneurship. I, I see that my husband, who's in a family business that was established in 1969, they are going into a third generation of family owned. Y'all, that is blooming huge. Just the family talk and the seeing what happens is a huge gift to me to see that they have struggles every day too. Their struggles are different than what mine are, but to see that they still struggle, how many years is that, 50 some, that they still face crises and unexpected craziness, just like we do, just like failed tulip crops they face that. And to know that what I'm facing is the way that being in business is. That is what being in business is. You are nothing but a fire extinguisher, y'all. That's what I think of entrepreneurs as. Entrepreneurs, think of yourself as a fire extinguisher. All you do is put out fires all day long, every day. And if that's not for you, this is not the ball game for you. You need to work for an entrepreneur. You need to let them roll with the punches and for them to digest the failed expectations. Sometimes I wonder, is that me? Am I, should I not be doing this when I get like I am right now, where I have a lot of irons in the fire right now? And when you add them all up, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm drowning here, folks. But then I have a reality discussion with Steve at the breakfast table who because of his experience as entrepreneurs, his even keel temperament, his reality check brings me back. And all of these are gifts. And I think that there are ways for people that don't have all of this to certainly do it, but you got to stack the cards, friends. You got to stack the cards. And I'm going to give you one more example and then I'm going to get off this horse because I could really talk about this for a long time. I want you to know that you are not alone that this is what it's all about, facing failures. It's not, and there's, you know, golly day, I could go down some rabbit holes, y'all. It is not, we all face these failures, and that's what business is. It's how you respond and deal with those failures that makes the difference of how it comes out. That is true in everything, life, relationships, family, church, everything. We all have Horrible situations that happen, bad situations that happen, hurtful, but it's how we respond and you can, you choose how you respond and having the knowledge and the experience of others to base your response on is what makes all the difference in the world, folks. So here is another example, an encouragement. Okay, so if you don't already follow Sunny Meadows Flower Farm, and I'll put their stuff in the show notes. Stephen Gretel Adams, I think they've been growing for 16 years. They are a young couple, 
relative to me who's old, six, I'm 60. They're, I would guess, in their mid-30s. They've been growing for 16 years. They were not flat. They don't come from a farming background. They have definitely slashed their way through the industry, through trial and error, but they are super smart, super smart business people, um, which of course is why I led them to, they're the ones that teach grow and cut flower crops in hoop and greenhouses course. They're super smart, they're innovative, and their team, which is so very helpful. Um, but what I wanna give this example to you is you need to follow them on social media because they grow incredible volume, y'all. They're full-time farmers. This is their livelihood. They have 20 employees, y'all. They do an enormous business, and the big benefit from watching people like that is they have so much wisdom to share. Their tulip harvesting that's going on right now is crazy, y'all. I look at all of the all of the tulips that they're harvesting, and I think, all I see when I look at what they're doing is I see dollar bills in all the tulip bulbs they had to buy, dollar bills in all the harvesting, not to mention the planting of all of them, and then the anxiety of where are they going to sell them and keeping them sellable. When do you harvest them? How do you hold them? Oh my gosh, all I see is all the potential failures. But guess what, friends? They are nailing it. And why? Because they did their homework. They have sales outlets that are just lining up and waiting. Not one, not two, but multiple sales outlets that they can just open the door to those outlets as soon as the tulips, which always and unexpectedly happen when you didn't expect them to start. They are our um, example of how it can go really, really well. But let me tell you, they could curl your toes and your hair over failures that they have expect that they have experienced. And it's through them constantly evolving and educating um, and learning and stacking the cards for their business not just jumping in on hopes and dreams alone. Hopes and dreams is how it starts. Figuring it out before it's facing you in the head, you know, head on is what it is, what it's really about. So we have to really slow down and do the homework. Our expectations are rooted in hopes and dreams, but we have to go into it and be well prepared, educated, gather experience. Don't overcommit. And friends, do not overspend. That is, that's the part that makes you want to throw up. (laughs) That's the part. It's like all you can think about is whether you went in debt to do this, which I do not recommend and you do not need to do, friends, by the way. I am so all about that now because I have counseled so many people that have gotten in over their head and then they it it their expectations were not met. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to put several links in the show notes. One of which is going to be of my flower farm and school the basics. And um it's really about aligning your business or realigning your business. It doesn't have to be this this gamble, y'all. It, there, it is based on a whole lot more than that. But you need to take your failures, these unmet expectations, and turn the tables. It's never too late, and you can do it. You know, I also am going to put Dave Dowling class in the show notes, um, the link to his course, which is Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and more, because Dave gives you, if you are feeling led that you do want to grow ranunculus and anemones and dahlias and, I mean, a whole host of other stuff, perennials, there are step-by-step ways you should and shouldn't go about it. And um, so I will put that in there, put the in the show notes. Friends, there is education available. You just have to slow down. You have to do your homework and let's do this one step at a time. There is nothing wrong with having high hopes and wanting, particularly if you have a year or two of growing, 
under your belt with growing your business, but you got to you got to learn how to be a flower farmer. You have to have sales outlets lined up. You have to have people clamoring to buy your stuff, which that is the atmosphere today, friends. There are There's so much opportunity to sell beyond farmer's markets. And I hear people say all the time, there's too many growers. That's because we have such tunnel vision. When you become a professional grower, which is what sets you apart, join in and get educated. Step back and realize that there's nothing wrong with your idea. You just weren't prepared. And I can apply that to everything, y'all. Everything is um, the fear, the failures, you know, failed expectations are rooted in shallow roots, y'all. They don't, we got to do, we, if you want to be a successful business owner, you've got to set things up to have deep roots. You know, we are living during a time, an amazing opportunity for the domestic local flower sourcing revolution to happen. And we are just at the beginning. We import 80% of the flowers that are sold in this, in the United States anyway. And that is billions of dollars. Folks, you just... Our expectations, again, um, people's expectations are not factually based most often. We just have to get in there and go for it. So, folks, um, if you are enjoying this podcast, you just don't even know how much your reviews mean to me. Um, And it's not that I just want to read nice things that you have to say about me. It actually is what drives the podcast app that you listen on to show my podcast to more people. And there's nothing more affirming to me um, than you guys doing that. If you want to learn more about um, the Gardener's Workshop and the work that we're doing, our team, um, all of the things that we have available over there, tons of um, resources. We're an online virtual learning center, my, my online garden shop, which sells my books our online courses, the tool season supplies that I use on my farm. Um, Friends, it's in a really exciting time, and I invite you to go over there, sign up for my farm news. And folks, until we meet again, it is your friend Lisa signing off. Mm -hmm.